Welcome back everyone to another episode of how to get good now today is going to be all about champion points what you should do with them what they mean how they work lots and lots of passives in the champion points um trees as well that people don't necessarily pay attention to above all obviously this is going to help benefit people when they're trying to make their own builds or trying to optimize what they're using if they feel like something is somewhat lacking or it will help you along the road while you're gaining champion points if you're not quite maxed yet now, I don't doubt that in the future, this will probably be different, and I'll have to do another video for it, because we do know, as of last year, actually, that champion points are due to change at some point. But right now, people still need help with them in their current state, so we're going to go over them. So, first of all, we're going to go into the red tree. We're actually going to dump all of these and clear them for now, just so it doesn't confuse you. Now, you've got several different points in the red trees that benefit your survivability. Then you've got the green tree, which is mostly for your sustain in lots of different areas. And then you've got the blue trees, which are all about damage output and heals. Ironclad reduces the amount of direct damage that you take from direct attack. So if something is a physical instant one-time hit rather than something that is durated, this will negate the effects of that. So it could be a light attack. It could be a, a one-time heavy attack, not a channeled one, just like a flame staff or a dual wield or something like that. It could be a fireball. It could be an arrow. Anything that is direct. Anything that hits you without an extended duration. Now, the trick to spending champion points we're going to get to in a bit, but we're going to go over what these all mean first. Spell resistance, of course. The more spell resistance you have, the better versus the damage you're taking if it's spell type. So if it's physical, if it's like an arrow or poison or a light attack from a melee weapon or something like that, this is not going to affect this type of resistances. But if it's magic, fire, ice or lightning, this will come into play. Resistant is for critical resistance, which means basically if you get hit by a critical hit, you will resist X amount of it. Now this is only applicable at the moment, don't know whether they'll ever change that or not, in PvP versus players, because in PvE, PvE enemies do not crit. That's a shame, I know, but they don't. So this is only applicable for PvP. This is medium armor focus, and this gives you a physical resistance. So this is versus anything that's poison, disease, physical, bleeds, anything like that. For having five pieces of medium armor worn, and the amount of points you spend in here increases your resistance towards that. So this is a very simple tree direct damage physical resistance for medium wearers spell resistance for anyone and critical resistance for anyone who is perhaps in pvp but for using a set amount of points in this tree and all the other trees as well you get bonuses so when you use a bash attack you have a 20 percent chance to heal off of it this only requires 10 skill points in this tree so if we put points into here for example 10 we unlock it this one here requires 30. So if we put 30 into this, we unlock this. They're free. All you have to do is spend points here in any order. You'll notice here it doesn't have to be in the same thing. To unlock them. So I'll remove these for a moment. Each one of these is actually very beneficial, but most people don't pay attention to them. They don't even know why they're there. They don't even see them when they happen. So this heals you if you bash. This will give you a resistance bonus for both spell and physical of 660 for 3 seconds if you dodge roll. That requires 30 points. 660 is 1% resistances. So that's actually quite beneficial. Reinforce is really helpful, but you need 120 points in this tree. When you begin bracing, so when you start blocking basically, you gain a damage shield that absorbs 1254 damage for 3 seconds. And this effect can occur once every 10. So every 10 seconds, if you block, you'll get a 3 second damage shield. No, it's not massive, but it does help. When you take critical damage, you heal. So, remember this here. If you take critical damage, you can actually apply resistances towards it, which only applies to PvP. Critical damage can only be received in PvP. So receiving it heals you, and you take less damage from it. So these actually stack up really nicely. There's lots of different benefits in here. Pay attention to these, and you might want to spec certain amounts into these trees to unlock specific ones so if you have 119 points in here but you want this you need to find one more point somewhere else 
Party and Elemental Defender basically are exactly the same, but for different damage types. So this is for Physical, Poison, and Disease. This is for Flame, Frost, Shock, and Magic. This defends you against that type of damage. This defends you against the other. But you get hit for a lot of different types of damage in content. So sometimes you want to spec into one, sometimes the other, sometimes a bit of both, and even it out. This is much like the Physical Armor bonus, except instead of having a Physical bonus for having five pieces of Medium, you get a Physical bonus for having five pieces of Light. So this is quite handy. This increases your protection versus damage over time, basically. It reduces the amount of damage you take from damage over time. So, this is direct damage. This is damage over time, so dots. And this is just flat out any type of damage of those kinds. And they stack up together. So, if you have a poison reduction and a damage over time reduction, and you get hit by a poison injection, which is a single target damage over time, you will actually benefit from both of these bonuses. Not only that, the initial hit is direct, so you'll mitigate some of the direct attack as well. So the first hit, then the duration, and the fact that it's poison. These also have passives. Every single tree does. While you have a shield or frost staff equipped, your spell and physical resistance is increased by 1500. So tanks out there, this is why you have it when you didn't realize where your extra resistances came from. Unchained is really important, and even as a DPS, this is very helpful. When you break free, the cost of your next stamina ability within 5 seconds is reduced by 80%. That's a massive sustain bonus if you get caught short. Break out of a stun, next ability is much much cheaper, use something expensive. Again, you got to have 120 points in this tree to get it though. This one only needs 30. 75 points in this tree, you'll notice sometimes you hit stuff and you crit and you heal and you don't know why. When you deal critical damage, you can heal for 330 and this can happen once every 5 seconds. So, just for doing damage, just for critting every so often, you can actually heal. When you take Flame, Frost, Shock, Magic, or Oblivion damage, equal to 30% of your max health, which is a pretty big hit, you actually restore Magicka. And this effect can happen once every 10 seconds. So just for having 10 points in this tree, as a low champion point player, you get this. You just get Magic back for getting hit really hard. Expert Defender is only for PvP. Because this reduces the damage taken from player, light, and heavy attacks. That's important to note just for PvP. You will get hit by light and heavy attacks quite a lot. You want to obviously defend against that. And they do stack against these defensive bonuses here. If perhaps it happens to be a lightning staff, which is damage over time. It happens to be a direct from a, a melee based weapon or a bow. Or it happens to be direct full stop, which works with this too. So... You balance them out and try and get as many uh, benefits from each one as you possibly can without spending too many points to not be able to use other stuff. Bastion, very simply put, this increases the effectiveness of your damage shields by a said percentage. So this increases their strength. And yes, this one here, uh, Reinforced, which gives you the damage shield for having 120 points in this tree. Although that's a small damage shield, yes, this will make it stronger. Now again, heavy armor. You had light here. You had physical, uh, medium here. They're all physical bonuses to resistances for having five pieces one. This one is exactly the same, but obviously the physical resistance bonus is for wearing heavy, not for wearing light or medium. Quick recovery is very important because it increases your healing received. Healing received is misunderstood by a lot of people. The healing amount that is done by the player is then given to the person that receives the heal. And it's a set amount based on how much the strength of the heal was when you got it. But healing received as a bonus increases the strength of the heal you take. So basically if you got a 10k heal and it's a flat 10k. By the time it gets to you it considers your healing received bonuses and heightens that 10k by the percentage that you have to increase it once you get it. That sounds really weird, but it is how it works. There's two different types of healing done in the game. We can go over it in another video in more detail, but basically the heal amount that you take is boosted by your healing received bonus. Now, of course, we do have passives in the skill tree as well. So for 10 points, you actually take less damage while resurrecting people. For 30 points, when you resurrect another player, you will give them magical recovery. This is actually scaled off your max resources. So the higher your maximum resources in terms of magicka, the higher that bonus is. So... If a magic DPS reses someone, that recovery is a lot, lot higher. 
Um, this requires 120 points. When you drink a potion, you gain a damage shield that absorbs damage for 15 seconds, which is really nice. Although lots of people don't tend to spec heavily into this skill line. If you do get this, that's helpful. And yes, of course, if you had enough points, it would stack alongside this. That's tricky. Um, and of course, revival. When you are resurrected by another player, you gain a damage shield that absorbs 10k damage for 5 seconds. 75 points in this tree will give you a shield when you get up. So this is less damage taken when you res. This is a damage shield for you when you get up. This is a recovery for you when you get up. And this is a damage shield for you if you take a potion. So basically, if you have loads and loads of points into this tree and you just get resurrected, damage shield here. Take a potion to get some resources back because you just got up. There's a damage shield there. And recovery as well. You're straight back in the fight really quickly. So if you are really squishy and you die a lot and you can't quite figure out how to get back in the fight and stop dying all the time, you might want to get some of these. They're good recovery bonuses. Speaking of recovery bonus, we're now in the sustain trees. Warlord reduces the cost of break free. Break free is expensive. It costs you stamina. You're going to want to get that cost down. So this actually helps towards that. Siphon, when you deal damage with a light or a heavy attack, you decrease the enemy's health, magic, and stam recovery. That's actually more beneficial in PvP because obviously players have resources and you can stop them recovering so fast. So that helps. Sprinter, of course, reduces the cost of sprint if you want to do that kind of stuff. And Bash and Focus reduces the cost of your Bash. Bash is quite expensive. You do need it to interrupt with and this gets the cost down. And of course, there are points in this tree for having set amount of points and this is where these start coming in again. When you bash, you have a 33% chance to reduce the enemy's movement speed for 20% by 3 seconds. So if you do interrupt something or bash it for any reason, it slows it down. Increases your crafting inspiration gain by 20%, so you level up crafting quicker. When you die, you heal all allies within 8 meters of you by 3300. So if you, for some reason, end up getting nuked and you have 75 points in this tree, other people around you will benefit from a heal just to give them a little bit of a push so that they don't die as well and here improves your mastery with mounts removing all stamina costs outside of combat you have 120 points in here it doesn't matter how much stamina you have your stamina is ignored you can just run forever tenacity is very important when you heavy attack with a magicka or stamina based weapon so a physical weapon or a magic weapon and you do a fully charged heavy this will increase the amount you get back. So if it's melee base or physical base, you get stamina back. If it's magic, you get magic back. Okay, this increases your mag recovery. Set percentage, depending on how many points you spend. Mooncalf increases your stam recovery and healthy increases your health recovery. Quite simple. However, there are bonuses. You have a 10% chance to gain double resources when you're farming for resource nodes. So uh, when you're looking for, I don't know, ore, wood, wax, plants, anything. Double resources can be gained. When you activate a synergy ability, you gain two ultimate. That's in a previous video, by the way. I'll link that in the description just in case. Increases your movement speed while mounted by 2% and increases your health and magic recovery while sprinting. So if you do have 120 points in here, while you sprint, you have heightened recovery both for health and magicka, and that can be quite helpful. If you're using magicka skills, but your resources are low and you start running, they'll get back faster. Reduces the gathering time by 50%. So if you are farming, not only can you get extra resources back, but you can actually do it a lot quicker. That actually does help, because otherwise you sit there banging away at an or resource node for too long, and that's not efficient farming. That helps. This reduces your cost of sneak. If you're into that kind of stuff, this will help you uh, not spend so much stamina. There are actually other passives for this in skill lines where you can heighten that even some more. Shadow Ward, of course, reduces the cost of block, which can be quite expensive. Tumbling, of course, reduces the cost of dodge roll. This increases the effectiveness of healing reduction abilities by a said percentage as well. Now, this is very important if you are using Defile. If you're using the ability Defile to reduce people's healing received... This will make it stronger. So if you say, for example, you've got a 15% healing received reduction on the target as a debuff, this will change that 15% to a much, much higher number. And of course, we've got bonuses here as well. Some of which aren't used very often. One of which I do encourage people to actually take on purpose. This will increase the amount of gold you find in treasure chests and safe boxes by 50%. Everybody wants that. Most people have it anyway. This reduces the cost of your repairing of your armor by 10%. Fair enough, you're going to have to do that quite a bit. 
This one is the highest one in this uh, tree, which most people don't even know about. Which is when you kill an enemy with a heavy attack, you become invisible for two and a half seconds. And this can happen once every five. So, all you have to do is finish someone with a heavy attack and you disappear. And this one is actually one of my favorites. Increases the quality of items you find in treasure chests for having 75 points in this tree. What that means is, any chest you loot could have a, a next stage up higher quality gear up to purple. And you can actually get two items of a said type instead of one. Now, when you go into normal dungeons, for example, you'll find an abundance of simple chests, which generally drops green, blue, and it tends to be not set pieces. If you're really lucky, you can get set pieces, but not very often. This increases the quality of the items. So not only could you get two pieces, you have a heightened quality chance, so you can now get set pieces quite often. And instead of being green, they could be blue or higher. Depends on the chest and depends on whether you have this or not. But it does increase your ability to farm. It doesn't make you get the weapon you're definitely after, because let's face it, the game isn't psychic. But it does help you lessen the time it takes to farm for certain stuff. Or if you just want gear to squash, you get loads more of it. Now we're going to go into the Healy type damagey trees. This is very, very important because the type of damage that you deal reflects which trees you would spend your points in. So first of all, you've got Bless. This increases your healing done. With any heal that you specifically do, whether it be stamina or magic based, this increases the strength of the heals you do. This includes sets that heal, by the way, as well. Elfborn increases your critical damage and critical healing with magic abilities. So if your heal is magic based, not stamina, this will increase the crit strength of it. And if your damage is magic based, not stamina, this will increase the critical damage output of it. It's not for stamina DPS. This is for magic DPS and magic healers. This increases the damage of flame, frost, shock and magic damage done. That's pretty much all elements covered for the magic side of things. If you're specced into mag, you want this. Spell erosion increases your spell penetration. Spell and physical penetration are different. Enemies have physical and spell resistances. Now, in PvE, resistances are 18 0, 0. What you would kind of aim to do if you can with inside your group and your own setup is to increase your spell penetration, which fights against the resistances, and or reduce the resistance of the target so that that 18200 goes down to nothing. Then you can hit as hard as you possibly can for your setup. Now, we do unlock some really handy passives. This video is going to be linked in the description, but I have a video called Vengeance OP fully going over this. But this is nuts. When you block three spells within 10 seconds of each other. So you've got 30 second timer here if you put it bang on the nose of 10 seconds for each one. But you could do it once every one second and stack it really quickly. You will actually critically strike your next magicka costing ability within the next five seconds as long as you actually stack three blocks up so if it's a damage ability you're guaranteed a crit if it's a heal ability you're guaranteed a crit pay attention to this passive there is a link in the description below fully explaining how this works even demonstrating it on a dragon knight where you can guarantee a heal from zero to full it's a really handy passive Yes, everybody has it, but if you know it's there and you can pay attention to it and utilize it, you can pay, you can um, benefit from this a lot. This increases your spell crit rating by 9%, flat out, 30 points in the tree. Easy spell crit. When you drink a potion, the, the cost of your next magic ability within the next 7 seconds is reduced by 80%. So if you do use a potion of any kind, cheaper skills. And this one requires a lot of points, but when you kill an enemy, you have a 20% chance to restore 970 magicka. For up to three friendly targets within 2.5 meters of the enemy. That goes higher the more champion points you spend and the more you spec into Magicka DPS. But that is a very powerful passive as well. Free sustain. Now this tree is very specific. It's about certain damage types. So you don't want to put everything into everything. This increases the damage done with light attacks and heavy attacks with destruction or resto staff abilities. As well as overload by the way. The sorcerer... Um, ultimate so any points in here will heighten those abilities physical weapon expert on the other hand increases the light and heavy attack damage of melee or physical based abilities or weapons even so one-handed shield 
two-hander, dual wield, and bows. And werewolf light attacks and heavy attacks. So this is magic light and heavy. This is physical light and heavy. You don't want both, obviously, unless you're using both types of weapons. Master at Arms increases your direct damage of any kind. So it doesn't matter what element or physical damage you're doing. If it's a direct attack, this will heighten it. And these light and heavy attacks from certain weapon types can be considered as direct and they stack. Shatter and Blows is quite simple. Increases your damage done to enemies with a damage shield. Now, this does have more PvP application because you're up against people that have got loads of damage shields. However, there are enemies in PvE that do have damage shields. And if you're struggling with those phases, this can help to get those damage shields off so you can get to the next phase. Now, the passives you get from here are also very helpful. When you block a heavy attack, your next light attack used within 7 seconds deals 30% more damage. Remember, your light attacks can be boosted. When you block a melee attack, you have a 15% chance to deal 6553 physical damage to the enemy. And this can happen once every 5 seconds. When you use a dodge roll, you set the enemy off balance. Off balance is explained in the status effects video. But it's very, very helpful. We're going to explain that a little bit on the next tree. And this increases the damage done with light and heavy attacks by 5% to enemies below 25% health. This is a passive execute. Your light attacks and your heavy attacks from any weapon type are stronger the lower the health. Now, Thermoturge is very different. This is all damage over time. Magic, poison, physical, fire, doesn't matter. Just like this is for direct attacks of any type, this is for damage over time of any type. Precise Strikes, however, increases your critical damage and your critical healing with stamina abilities. This is basically the physical version of Elfborn. Only if it's stamina based. Whereas Blessed is flat for all heals. So these trees are kind of the opposite of each other. You've got healing done for any heals. And then you've got damage done for any damage over time. But you'll notice that here is spell penetration, spell crit, and flat spell damage or spell ability damage types. And this one has got flat physical damage types, physical penetration, and physical crit. The direct opposites. This is damage over time. This is healing. These are all magic. These are all physical. Now, the bonuses in this tree are essential to most people in PvE. And sometimes PvP as well. So, for 10 points, when you interrupt an enemy, your next physical damage ability used within 7 seconds deals 50%, 15% more damage. So, if you bash an enemy and then hit them with an execute, you just gain 15% on that. That's quite handy. Increase your weapon crit rating by 9%. Flat out, have a crit bonus. Easy peasy. 75 points into this tree will give you the exploiter passive. If an enemy is off balance, all of your damage is improved by 10% during that phase. That's insane. And this is also very powerful. However, most of the time, it's only really stamina DPS or tanks that really benefit from this. Because we're the only ones that can really spec into this tree to get anything beneficial worth 120 points. Because Thermoturge applies to everybody if they're doing damage over time. Magic and DPS can benefit from this. But none of this benefits Magic and DPS at all. So the most you can go into here is 100 points. Unless you want to waste 20 points to get this. However, Stam DPS, simply put, we're going to use these. And a tank could probably use these too, just because they're not going to be using too much into anything else, because they don't really deal damage. Depending on your build, of course. This will give you major heroism, giving you 3 ultimate every 1.5 seconds for 9 seconds, with a 20 second cooldown, if you go low health. So, as a squishy, if your health goes too low, and you survive... You gain faster ultimate regen. Very helpful. Now we're going to briefly talk about diminished returns. Now the lower your CPs, the more you get out of it. That may sound weird. Obviously, the benefits do stack. So the more champion points you have, the stronger you technically are for resistances, recovery, and damage output. Or heal output, or whatever. But the more points you spend, the more you waste. So to start off with, if we want to go into, say, 5% of Ironclad here, it's going to cost us... Not too much. 11 points. Remember, by the way, just in case you didn't know, you have to go over the decimal point to get the benefit. Some trees are a little bit tricky with this, but generally, 
if you go over the flat percentage, you'll get the bonus. So here it's 5.23, it's 5%. The next one is 5.67, it's still 5%. If we were 4.9, it's not 4.9, it's 4. You only pay attention to the main number, the decimal doesn't count. As long as you go over the decimal, you're good. Now, going back to this, 5% is 11 points. 10% is 23 points. So that's not too bad. But what if we want another 10%? Looking at this on paper, based on how we're going so far, 23 points being 10%, another tw 23 points would be another 10, right? Well, let's put another 23 points in, putting this up to 46. Nope, we only got 7. Now let's put another 23 in. Putting this up to 69. We didn't even get 7 that time. We got 5. So the more points you put in, the less gradually you get back. So at the beginning, you'll notice that putting loads of points into here, maybe up to about 50% or even 51, in, uh, 50 points or even 51 points, will give you a really big bonus. But on top of that, once you get over around sort of 64, you start getting massive diminished returns on most trees, on most areas. So the earlier you are into your champion points, the, the bigger boost you get. And then later on, you do get stacking bonuses, but they come less often. So if we say for argument's sake, we'll go 64 into this, that will give us a nice 21.73 bonus. However, there's only another few points left before we get to 100 points and you can only put 100 in each tree 21 percent let's rack it up to 100 that wasn't a lot was it for 36 points 36 we only got four percent whereas at the lower end all we need to get four percent is this nine 4% at the lower end is 9 points. 4% at the higher end is 36 points. The more points you spend, the less you get back. So try to balance these out. What I tend to do with Ironclad, just as an example, is generally go between 72 and 81, which is quite high. But that's a nice sweet spot. So you've got 23% there, or you've got 24% here. There's now 19 points remaining to get the final 1%. I'm not going to use those 19 points there. In fact, if I want to go to 72, I'm not going to use those 28 points. 2% here, I could get. What have we got? So we say 28. I could get 7% here. So 7% physical alongside not having the 2% direct. Maybe I'm getting hit by loads of direct damage anyway. So this 7 and 23 work a lot, lot nicely together rather than having nothing in here and just an extra 1 or 2%. So diminished returns are quite heavy. Now you'll notice that especially when it comes to the recovery side of things. So if we go into here, tenacity for example, and we'll go up to 75 points, which is a kind of a, a sweet spot for me. That's where I tend to put stuff. Now here's an example. It's going to cost me 25 points to get to 100. Which will give me 1%. 25 points for 1% extra because of the high diminished returns. The higher we go, the more our points are less effective. But I could be putting 25 points somewhere else. I could be putting it into dodge roll, which is really helpful. Because if I put 25 points into here, I'm on 10%. 10% dodge roll reduction and 14% heavy attack return. Or no dodge roll reduction and just 1% extra here. This is where the balance comes in. This is where you need to decide while you're leveling or even when you're maxed how to wisely spend your points in the most beneficial way possible towards you and your build. There's lots of different situations where these can be beneficial and where you can twist and turn them as much as you want. But there are ways to optimize versus what you're using. So this does become your choice, but that's just a demonstration of how diminished returns actually works. The lesser points you have, the bigger bonus you get early on. The more points you have, obviously the bonuses do stack up and you do benefit from them, but it's going to cost you a lot more points to get there. Now, if you have a player, for example, that's 160 champion points versus someone that's perhaps 650 or 700, there is a diminished returns base that you have to pay attention to, of course, if you're specking heavily into one 
particular area. But between 160 and a higher number, you have that boost really, really early. So your first few or halfway through champion points is actually a very beneficial stage. You actually escalate in performance quite a bit. But when you get to 700 and you're going towards 810, the gap there is very small. You are so high into your diminished returns now. Every single point that you start spending doesn't even give you a 1%. It doesn't even give you a half percent. You're into small, small decimals. You will see an increase either way. But the higher you get into the champion points, the less effective each one of these bonuses becomes if you spend too many points in them. So what I would advise you to do, if that makes any sense whatsoever, is to obviously spec into your strongest areas. But don't go flat out 100 into anything unless... You really don't have anything to use on them. So if, for example, I go, say, 100 into Staff Expert, because I want as much as possible out of my Lightning Heavy Attack. Great. Now I've hit maximum for this. 35%. That's nice. But that last 1% is a whole 16 points. I could put them into Thermiturge and further increase the channel of that Lightning Heavy Attack by 7% on top of the 34. So, do I want the extra 7 out of the damage over time effect of the ability? Or do I want to just nuke the crap out of this, not bother using it, and go all the way 100 because I can, and only get the 1 from it? That's the difference. Play smart with your points. Put as much into each one as you like, but consider what you could gain from other ones if you split them up just a little bit. And of course, we need to reset those so that I don't have uh, all my champion points messed up. So hopefully that helped. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. There is a lot to understand when it comes to champion points. I know people are really confused about them. Where should they put them? Where shouldn't they? Ultimately, it is up to you and how it affects your personal build or your play style. Maybe you need more healing than damage in some situations because you die a lot. Maybe you need to change your resistances versus the content because you're taking too much physical damage and you've got loads into spell resistance for the wrong reasons. Vice versa, obviously you can change that around. Your champion points are essentially up to you. Yes, there are builds out there on my channel and others that utilize certain areas of champion points for a reason. But if you want to change stuff, just be aware that sometimes you might lose in one area and gain in another, and that could be a negative or a positive depending on what you need. So... Play with the champion points, see what you think works best for you, and if it doesn't, of course, you can just change it again. Anyway, first of all, thank you very much for watching. I hugely appreciate your support, and if you are not subscribing already, please do hit that button. It is free, and don't forget to hit the notification bell, of course, so you can see when I upload new videos. If you would like to support outside the channel, however, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, the website, zynodegaming.com, where all the written guides are as well. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.